Hello, I'm Olivier. I'm um, the Xenorchestra project leader, and this is Julian, which is uh, the lead developer. We'll see together what is Xenorchestra, how it works, and we'll make some a little demo to see that. So first, what is Xenorchestra? Well, basically, um, Xenorchestra is an open source project providing a simple and powerful web interface to Xen. And technically, it's not just a web interface. We'll see that later. Is it just another UI? Because there is a lot of, a lot of them now. There is Zen Center, Open Zen Manager. There's a lot of small projects. Also, you have projects using Libvirt, plus an agent to install, etc. So why we choose to make Zen Orchestra? When you see all these projects, they are fine, but each of them have some shortcomings, like, for instance, Zen Center uh, is Windows only. It's a rich client. It means you need to install it on every computer when you need to administrate your Zen servers. There is Open Zen Manager, which is basically a Zen Center clone. It's also a rich client, and there is no persistence. What I mean by no persistence, I mean when you close the software, for example, Zen Center, you lost all the connection to your servers. That's why we choose for Zen Orchestra to make a daemon running all the time. And that's why we choose to make our architecture like it's right now. The project started uh, in 2009 as a hobby first. It used the old Zendy API, which is now duplicated, and it was uh, written in PHP. Then we choose to reboot the project, and this time to use Zappy, which is another API, and um, with the latest web technologies existing at the moment. So that's why uh, Zen Orchestra is now a single page application using Node and other latest technology in web. And this time, uh, it's not a hobby anymore because uh, we are a small company behind it, so it's a game changer. And recently, one month ago, we released the latest version, uh, 3.5, and that's the latest version. As you can see, it's the home view. If you want to see that in live, there is a demo running on HTTPS dev1.vates.fr. Uh, you need to give some credentials. It's demo demo. So you want to, to get an eye on it. It runs on our lab, so uh, it's in our um, offices in France, and we have a very poor connection. So if it's slow, that's normal. But that's a home page. As you can see, um, so it's in a web browser, basically. And you can see your Zen infrastructure. In this case, that's our small lab. There is only two hosts in a pool. And you can see all the VM running with green dots and halted VMs with red dots. But first, when we, when we created this project, we have goals. Uh, we want to achieve with Zen Orchestra. The first one, the ob obvious one, is to have the possibility to administrate your Zen infrastructure from a web browser. Because you can access it from any web browser on any operating system and from anywhere, basically. Also, we want to make a user-friendly interface. What I mean by user-friendly, we want to have a nice design and maybe for doing an action, not to have to click 10 times to do some stuff. Another goal uh, is to have solution running out of the box. I mean by that, no agent to install anywhere. There is other solutions that are really powerful, but you need to install something in your hosts. In this case, our goal is to avoid that kind of stuff. 
Another thing is because we are using um, the Zen API, Zappi, EXO can work alongside existing tools. It means, for instance, if you use today Zen Center, well, you can use Zen Orchestra. At the same time, there's no problem with that. And uh, we meant it to be resource friendly. Uh, for example, uh, to reduce the bandwidth usage, CPU or RAM of Zen Orchestra. So, by design, we think about that. And the last point is have one place to manage the whole infrastructure. You'll see that uh, in the next slides. So a question um, we have sometimes from users is, well, okay, that's great, but why are you using Zappi? Why this API? So first, what is Zappi? Zappi is an API and a tool stack for Zen. And so far, it's uh, the most feature complete stack. You can do a lot of stuff with Zappi. In parallel, you have Libvirt, but now it's really lagging behind Zappi because Libvirt support for Zen, yeah, it, it's getting better, but now it's far behind Zappi. Another great plus with Zappi, it's been used for Zen Center, XCCLI, and the big project like Open or Cloud Stack. And it's also shipped with Zen Server. So if you have Zen Server, well, you can use Zen Orchestra. It will work out of the box. And Zappi is also available from the sources or it's packaged from uh, Debian and CentOS. And for the EXO architecture, I'll let Julian go. So hi. So I'm going to talk to you about, a bit about, uh, about uh, Zen Orchestra architecture. So I have not a lot to say, but what I really want to emphasize is that we, we try to make the architecture as modular as possible. Uh, by that, I mean that we try to, to split the project into many components. So the main component is Exo server, which is a daemon which uh, is always connected to your servers and, and that do the, all, the, uh, all the logic of uh, the orchestra. It can handle the uh, SELs, user management. So everything, the, the main part of, of the orchestra is EXO server. Then you also have the visible uh, module, which is EXO web. EXO web is release interface that you saw just earlier. We also have uh, two other mo modules that we just re developed recently. So the first is EXO CLI, which is a really simple tool uh, that you can use to script uh, your EXO. So by that I mean that you can start or stop uh, any servers. Maybe I can show you a, a quick uh, video on that, about that. So, Oliver, please help me. <laughs> so, uh, scroll down. When, which one? EXO CLI. Okay, so here you can see, for instance, EXO CLI, which runs uh, on, a, on a client machine. So you have first to register uh, the EXO server instance that you want to connect to, and then you can just uh, type some command and to use the EXO API to, uh, to interact easily with Xen. Because uh, we, in uh, Xen Orchestra, we use this API uh, to, inter to interact with Xen, but it's quite difficult to, to understand and to manage. So you can use this uh, nice API if you want to, to for instance, uh, start or stop your VMs at uh, given hours. Uh, so I think that's all I can show you on EXO uh, CLI for now. Uh, we also recently developed EXO Backup. So I have also a uh, uh, little video to show you. So EXO Backup is also a CLI tool uh, which is used to, to create snapshots on your VMs, automatically running snapshots. So maybe I won't show you everything because it's a bit long uh, in this video. But there you can see that you then the, the user connects to the Xen Orchestra server and asks uh, the Xen Orchestra server to snapshot all VMs uh, with a number of uh, maximum snapshots of, of two. So what I mean by that is that if there is older snapshots, they will be automatically deleted. So for now, it always it just does that. It snapshots your VMs, but uh, the long-term purpose is to, it's to also uh, de um, download the, the snapshots the exported snapshots to be able to restore your VMs uh, 
uh, very fast if you have any problem. So maybe I can just uh, let it show the deletion of all the snapshots. I don't know. So th there you can see that there is another snapshot and the old one is deleted. So that's uh, almost uh, all that is to say about uh, XO modular architecture. What I really like with uh, this architecture is with the XO API, it's really easy to create a new interfaces. And I'd like to, to, to see developers using this API to create some interesting stuff. That's why we are trying to achieve. So that, that is what uh, Oliver was meaning uh, by uh, saying it's, just, it's not just a, a web interface. It's an interface to manage your Xen uh, network. So the benefits of a modular architecture, if, uh, it's of course, it's easier to develop, but it's easier to, to maintain and to create uh, new components. So here you, you have a schema of the architecture. So on the left side, you have your Xen servers, and on the right side, you have your Xen interface, interfaces. So here are web, two web interfaces and one CLI. And on the middle, there is Exo server, which manages everything. So just a few points I'd like to highlight. Is, uh, so if there was no main point, one of the, of the problems would be that there, there would be too many connections because the number of connections between clients and Xen servers uh, would grow exponentially, uh, which is not a problem with a, a center, uh, a, a middle uh, Xen orchestra server at the center. Uh, but there is also another very important benefit for administrator to have uh, uh, just one uh, access uh, to your Xen servers is that you don't have to expose all your Xen servers to the internet to be able to manage them, which is a really security uh, problem. You can just expose the Xen Orchestra server. So, so you can manage your Xen servers, but still they will be protected because in a, in a secure network. So yes, that's okay for the architecture. So now, today, um, what does XO do? So the first step uh, we put on the goals was to have an easy process of installation. So that's why we created an appliance. Basically, it's a Debian VM running with Zen Orchestra installed on it. And in only three steps, you can run Zen Orchestra. So you have to download it, import it in your Xen server or Xen plus SAPI hosts, and well, you can use it. No complicated stack to, stack to install, and uh, that's, that's good news. When you want to try the product, it's easy. You just have to download it. But as an open source product, you can also, if you like, use it from the sources we have um, repositories on GitHub, so there's no problem to do, uh, to do that. And today, um, I call them standard features because I think that's the basic stuff you want to do with that kind of interface. The first is you have a login process, so you can't see anything if you are not connected. Uh, for instance, um, when you go on the demo on the website, you have the demo demo account, and you can only see something, but you are not an administrator, so without any credential, you can't see anything. The process to connect to any host is really simple. You just have to enter the IP, the user, and the password, and it's added on the main view. We choose to have a simple workflow to create a VM. I mean by that, uh, you, for creating VM, you have just one page, one view. You don't have to click on next, next, next. It's just one view because it's a web page. It's easier to do that. And you have a summary at the end, and you just have to, to launch the VM, and that's OK. You can also live migrate, do snapshots, rollbacks, etc. You can edit objects like VM name, its CPU, RAM, etc. We'll show you a short demo after that. You have console views, and you can clone, convert a VM to a template, etc. And you have also what I call useful features. That's not really big stuff, but 
when you work every day with Zen, that can be really interesting stuff. For example, you have live filtering. I will show you a short demo about that to understand the concept. Well, basically, you can see, in this case, it's pretty easy. You, you don't have a lot of VM, but let's say I want to find a VM with a specific IP address. So I will use the search bar and start to type the IP address that I know to find the VM which has this address. So I start to type it, and as you can see, it's filtered in real time as I type the text. So, so far, there is a lot of objects with the, this IP, but if I continue and I finish to type the IP, I find my VM. And it's fast. So, for instance, if I click on the VM I found, I can see the VM page with the IP I search. So that's the live filtering feature. You have also batch operation, which is really cool to use. For example, you want to select uh, a batch of VM, and it's like if you use uh, Gmail, it will sound familiar, but it's, that's normal. That's basically the same stuff. For example, if you want to select all the running VMs, you just have to select running, and well, all your running VM are selected and ready to have an action on all of them. But you can also choose all VM running on a specific host. In this case, we will choose all VM running on lab one. And they are selected. So now you can send an order, and in, in this case, we choose to migrate those VM to lab two. And let's go. And as you can see, as soon as send the order, um, the green dots became orange dots. It means there is an action running on this VM. And if you pay attention to um, the lab two hosts, you will see that the RAM um, occupied by VM will be raised. It's 33%, and now it's 43%. And it's all in life because we are getting events from the Zappi, so we know when there is any change on your Xen servers. Oops. In the same time, I can select, for instance, two other VMs and choose to stop them. As you can see, they are shut down. And after that, I will choose to delete them by selecting them and to do delete with their disk. And you're done. Well, oh. Uh, we saw Excel backup and Excel CLI before. And uh, finally, we can also modify uh, running VM with adjust their performance settings. For instance, um, you are in the view of my VM, which have four vCPUs and four gigs of RAM. And the VM is running now. But well, I want to reduce uh, the CPU used on this VM and the RAM. So let's check the information in the console. As you can see, there is four gigs of RAM and four CPUs. And now I will choose to modify those just by editing. It's really easy. I just change that. So two vCPU and two gigs of RAM. And now I will check this on the console. And you have two gigs of RAM and two vCPUs. So it's really easy to modify the resources of your VM, even if it's running. That's the power of Zen. But this time, you can do it from a web browser. So what's next? Well, uh, this is the roadmap. The first, the first thing asked by users um, is, well, we want to have fine-grained ACL and user management and all of that connected to an LDAP directory, AD or OpenLDAP. Open 
After that, people ask uh, from live statistics showing resources used by the VM in real time. And a lot of other stuff like import, export VM. And I saw also the final stuff um, will be ideal is to have a um, collaborative template repository. I mean by that uh, to provide uh, VMs ready with some stuff installing. Uh, for example, uh, to have a Docker ready VM. And in one click, you can choose to download it and to use it. I will let uh, Julian explain um, ACL and user management. So I don't have very much to say because it's really uh, obvious. But uh, of course, uh, with user management, uh, you can uh, edit uh, users, add new users, block them, or edit their permissions. And what I would like to say is that these users are not related to uh, users in, in, um, in, the Xen, uh, in the Xen server. Because in Xen servers, there is already a notion of users and SELs, but uh, this user is completely uncoupled from it. It's, um, it's uh, a layer uh, from uh, for, um, layer done by Xen Orchestra. We, we wanted to, to add this layer in Xen Orchestra because we want to be able to connect to multiple pools, and we don't want to, to, to force the users to configure any, every pool. So you just have to configure users and ACLs in the orchestra, and it will, it, will, it will take care of everything. So user management is pretty obvious. So um, f for now, it already exists in a very simple way, but we would like to, yes, there is a question? I'm curious if this will extend to being able to delegate access to uh, a VM. So if I'm, say, the admin of a VM that I can say users 2345. Exactly. That's the whole, the whole purpose of that. Okay. To be able to create users uh, dedicated to the administration of a specific VM or of a, for, of a group of VM. And it will be, of course, a very fine-grained uh, permission. For instance, you can say that this user is a VM user, and he, he will be able to start, stop, or reboot the VM. And this other user is a VM administrator, and it, we, uh, he will be able to, to change the settings, for instance. So I will talk about it just, uh, just later. Uh, and I would, what I would like to say also is that we, we would like to implement a, an, an LDAP connector to, uh, to the orchestra to be able to, for companies to, already, to use the already existing users, of course. It's not done yet, but uh, we hope to implement it. In, um, what we would like to, to do in, in Xen Orchestra is to, to provide a plugin interface uh, in the Xen Orchestra server for users to be able to develop really specific features and, de and deploy them easily. So I would like to implement this LDAP connector in a plugin without touching the Xen Orchestra core. Okay, so that's all about LDAP and user management. Just uh, a really simple schema about ACLs. So what is an ACL? It's, uh, it's just a permission given to a specific user uh, for a specific item. But you, you don't have to use this uh, really low level stuff. You can, you can put users in group. You can put item in a set. For instance, all the VM uh, used by a given team for a specific project. And instead of um, managing all the lower, lower level uh, permission, such as starting, stopping a VM, you can have roles. roles that for instance, a role can be VM administrator or VM user. So that's, why, that's what we, we implement. But it's not done yet, and it's, of course, open for comment. So if you have any ID, any, any request, feel free to, to tell them to us or to interact on our forum or GitHub uh, repositories. Yeah, so this is just a, a schema about the LDAP connectors. But it's really easy, so I won't explain it. So that's, that's all for, for the issues. Um, on this screen, uh, it's a mock-up, but you can see the goal of live statistics, where we want to go with that, um, especially um, we want to display all those information in one place to be easily understandable. And um, for instance, we'll, for, for example, here we have the VCP utilization, network utilization, RAM utilization, and disk IOs. So in live graphics uh, with 
different scales maybe, but that's, that's planned. So let's conclude. Um, as you can see, the roadmap is very clear because we got a lot of inputs from users telling us uh, what's really important. And those users are very enthusiasts. And as I said, expectations are mostly around ACLs. We got roughly 300 downloads per week. That's, that's not bad because uh, we start to create a community on our forums, a lot of activity. So it's really interesting to have feedbacks. And the good news is we have, we'll have a new developer uh, coming soon. So uh, it will speed up the development of Xenokistra. So uh, if you want to get on the project website, we've got a forum, a GitHub page. We are available on IRC and Twitter. So if you have any question now, feel free to ask. demonstrated the console view of uh, the virtual machine uh, frame buffer. So what do you use to implement this? Is it some ActiveX control or is it a cross-platform solution? No, it's entirely cross-platform. We use uh, only uh, JavaScript. Yeah, and uh, you can use it on any browser, on any, any system, Mac OS, Linux. And uh, in our office, we only work with Linux, so uh, we test it on other platforms. But uh, the, the, the main goal of Zen Orchestra is to provide uh, administration tasks on Zen with any browser. Thank you. Another question? No? Yes? Did you say the timeline for releasing the ACL stuff? The timeline for what, sorry? For the access control list. Mm. You have an idea? I don't know. <laughs> in fact, uh, I'm the only developer, so Oliver uh, helps me sometimes. But uh, And uh, for now, we had a lot of uh, other projects. But we hope to, to do the LCLs by the end of, uh, of the year. OK. So uh, yeah, we try to, to do it as, as fast as possible, but uh, we are limited. OK. So thank you very much. If, ah, there is a question. Just, just there. Yes. Uh, for the access control list, will that? I mean, I, I think I heard you say it was LDAP or whatever. No, no. The access control list is uh, only uh, is only managed in the orchestra and it stays oh. in the orchestra. The LDAP is just for user connection and authentication. Right. So it's, it's not like a you know VMware where you can hook into someone's Active Directory. And I, I can I can say well, well the point is um, um, the workflow is you have a users in your directory connecting for the first time and um, if it's authorized by the LDAP server it creates the user in Zen Orchestra but after that you have to uh, an administrator have to give permission to this user so that's the workflow like in uh, GitLab or other projects using LDAP uh, this way yes Is there was another question no. OK, so thank you very much. If you have uh, anything to tell to us, uh, feel free to discuss. Uh, and thank you. Thanks, guys.